we all are in the affections of our Reginald. The very hopelessness of our love is a bond that binds us to one another. Ah. Jealousy is merged with misery, while he, the very sign ashore of our eyes and hearts, remains icy and sensible. What have we to strive for? Oh, the love of maidens is to him as interesting as the tax is. Would that it were, he pays his taxes. And cherishes the receipts. Oh, happy receipts. Oh. Fools. I beg your pardon. Fools and blind. The man loves, wildly loves. But whom? None of us. No, none of us. His weird fancy has lighted for the nonce on patience, the village milkmaid. On patience? Oh, it cannot be. Bah! But yesterday I caught him in her dairy, eating fresh butter with a tablespoon. Oh, oh, oh. Today he is not well. Oh. oh! But patience boasts that she has never loved, that love is to her a sealed book. Oh, he cannot be serious. Tis but a passing fancy, twill quickly wear away. Oh, Reginald, if you but knew what a wealth of golden love is waiting for you, stored up in this rugged old bosom of mine, the milkmaid's triumph would be short indeed. <laughs>
You have never known true happiness. But the truly happy always seem to have so much on their minds. The truly happy never seem quite well. There is a transcendentality of delirium. An acute accentuation of supremest ecstasy, which the earthy might easily mistake for indigestion. But it is not indigestion. It is aesthetic transfiguration. <laughs> Enough of babble. Come. But, but stay. I have some news for you. The 35th Dragoon Guards have halted in the village and are even now on their way to this very spot. Oh, the 35th Dragoon Guards? They are fleshly men of full habit. Oh, we care nothing for Dragoon Guards. But bless me, you were all engaged to them a year ago. A year ago? <laughs> For that popular mystery known to the world as a heavy dragoon. Yes, 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 yes. Take all the remarkable people in history, rattle them up to a popular tune. Yes, 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 yes. The wisdom of Baden how bidding boys be prepared, coolness of pattern devising a plan, the genius of Einstein and E equals MC squared, grace of a Sally Rand folding her fan. The dogged persistence of Mounties who never rest, staunchness of Gordon defending Sudan, the courage of Hillary conquering Everest, patience of Ali admonishing Stan, the craft of a Steinway constructing his spinets, the speed of a banister breaking for minutes, the sexual prowess of Brown, Helen Gurley, the quickness of hand of Molary and Curly, there's Barnum and Bailey and Young, Mighty Joe, Gandhi and Gandhi, and Marlon Brando. Ascend to that soldierly pinnacle, get at the wealth of the Shah of Iran, the skill of Mount Batten consulting the binnacle, fervor of Russell for nuclear ban. The luck of Van Dorn, who won on that giveaway, grit of Grace Lawrence with Bedouin clan, the pluck of Prince Hal as portrayed by Olivier, charm of Rock Hudson, that manliest man, the terror of the the text of the leader, the sex of the pardon, virgins of Dylan, the flair of Bernardo in step with Anita, the chutzpah of Nixon confronting Nikita, this Churchill and Hitchcock and Madame Tussaud, Amos not Andy, and Bridget Bardot.
Even toffee would become monotonous. For toffee, read flattery, adulation, and abject deference. Carry to such a pitch that I began at last to think that man was born bent at an angle of 45 degrees. <laughs> Great heavens, what is there to adulate in me? Am I particularly intelligent? No. no. Or remarkably studious? No. no. Or excruciatingly witty? No. <laughs> unusually accomplished? No. Or, or exceptionally virtuous? <laughs> <laughs> no. You're about as commonplace a young man as ever I saw. You, you are. are! That's it, that's it exactly that describes me to a T. Thank you all very much. Oh. Well, I couldn't stand it any longer, so I joined this second-class motorcycle hey. gang. In a gang, thought I. I shall be occasionally snubbed, perhaps even bullied. Who knows? The thought was rapture. And, uh, here I am. Yes, and here are the ladies. Oh, oh. oh. thank you. Uh, but who is the gentleman with the long hair? I don't know. He seems popular. He does seem popular.
my book I seem to scan in a rapt, ecstatic way, like a literary man who despises female play. I hear plainly all they say, twenty lovesick maidens day. He is plainly all they say, twenty lovesick maidens day.
time the poet hath hymned, the writhing maid lies in quivering on Amorantine asphodel. How can he paint her woes, knowing as well he knows that all can be set right with caramel? When from the poet's plinth the amorous colocynth yearns for the aloe, bathed with rapturous thrills. How can he hymn their throes, knowing as well he knows that they are only uncompounded pills? Is it? And can it be? Nature hath this decree. Nothing poetic in the world shall dwell. on the fields of Mars. This 
sehr schwer. Dies machen wir, wenn wir. A cynic smile is but a while of guile. This costume chaste is but good taste misplaced. Let me confess, a languid love for lilies does not bright me. Lank limbs and haggard cheeks do not delight me. I do not care for dirty greens by any means. I do not long for all one sees that's Japanese. I am not fond of uttering platitudes in stained glass attitudes. In short, my medievalism's affectation, born of a morbid love, of admiration. If you're anxious for to shine in the high aesthetic line as a man of culture rare, you must get up all the germs of the transcendental terms and plant them everywhere. You must rely upon the daisies and discourse in novel phrases of your complicated state of mind. The meaning doesn't matter if it's only idle chatter of a transcendental kind. And everyone will say, as you walk your mystic way, if this young man expresses himself in terms too deep for me, why, what a very singularly deep young man this deep young man must be. Be eloquent in praise of the very dull old days which have long since passed away, and convince him, if you can, that the reign of good Queen Anne was culture's palmiest day. Of course you will poo-poo whatever's fresh and new, and declare it's crude and mean, for I'll stop short in the cultivated court of the Empress Josephine. And everyone will say, as you walk your mystic way, if that's not good enough for him, which is good enough for me, why, what a very cultivated kind of youth this kind of youth must be. Passion of a vegetable fashion must excite your languid spleen. An attachment a la Plato for a battery on potato or a not too French French bean. Though the Philistines may jostle you, rank as an apostle in the high aesthetic band. If you walk down Piccadilly with a poppy or a lily in your medieval hand. And everyone will say, as you walk your flowery way, if he's content with a vegetable love which would certainly not suit me, why, what a most particularly pure young man this pure young man must be. bitter-hearted one who finds all else hollow is pleased with me. For you're not hollow, are you? No, thanks. I have dined. <laughs> but I beg your pardon. I interrupt you. A life is made up of interruptions. The tortured soul yearning for solitude writhes under them. Oh, but my heart is a weary. Oh, I am a cursed thing. Don't go. Really, I'm very sorry. Tell me, girl, do you ever yearn? I yearn my living. <laughs> no, no. Do you know what it is to, to yearn for the indefinable, yet to be brought face to face daily with the multiplication table? Do you know what it is to, to seek oceans and to find puddles? That's my case. Uh, but I'm weary. Oh, I am a cursed thing. Don't go! If you please, I don't understand you. You frighten me. Oh, well, don't be frightened. It's only 
poetry. Well, if that's poetry, I don't like poetry. Don't you? Can I trust her? Patience, you don't like poetry? Well, between you and me, I don't like poetry. It's hollow, unsubstantial, unsatisfactory. What's the use of yearning for Elysian fields when you know you can't get them? I would only let them out on building leases if you had them. Sir, I... Patience, I have long loved you. Let me tell you a secret. I am not as bilious as I look. If you like, I'll cut my hair. There's more innocent fun within me than a casual spectator would imagine. Now, you've never seen me frolicsome. Be a good girl, a very good girl, and someday you shall. If you're fond of touch-and-go jocularity, <laughs> this is the shock for it. Sir, I will speak plainly. In the matter of love, I am untaught. I have never loved but my great aunt. But I am quite certain, under any circumstances, I couldn't possibly love you. Oh, you think not? I'm quite sure of it. Quite sure. Quite. Very good. Life is henceforth a, a blank. I don't care what becomes of me. I have only to ask that you will not abuse my confidence. Though you despise me, I am extremely popular with the other young ladies. I only ask that you leave me and never renew the subject. Certainly. Broken-hearted and desolate, I go. Oh, to be wafted away from this black Asseldama of sorrow, where the dust of an earthy today is the earth of the dusty.
dreadful to think of the appalling state I must be in. I had no idea that love was a duty. No wonder they all look so unhappy. <laughs> Upon my word, I hardly like to associate with myself. I don't think I'm respectable. I'll go at once and fall in love with a stranger. Pretty, pretty maiden, pretty, tell me true. Ever I know for willow, willow way. Have you ever a lover a dangling after you? Well, oh, well, you. I would fain discover if you have a you don't recognize me? Recognize you? No, indeed I don't. Have 15 years so greatly changed me? 15? 15 years? What do you mean? Have you forgotten the friend of your youth? Your Archibald, your little playfellow. Oh, Kronos, Kronos, this is too bad of you. Archibald? Is it possible? Why, let me look. It is. It is. It must be. Why, how happy I am. I thought we should never meet again. And how you've grown. Yes, Patience, I, I am much taller and much stouter than I was. And how you've improved. Yes, Patience, I, I am very beautiful. But surely that doesn't make you unhappy. Yes, Patience. Gifted as I am with a beauty which probably has not its rival on earth, I, I am nevertheless utterly and completely miserable. Oh, but why? My child love for you has never faded. Conceive then the horror of my situation when I tell you that it is my hideous destiny to be madly loved at first sight by every woman I come across. But why do you make yourself so picturesque? Why not disguise yourself? Disfigure yourself? Uh, Anything to escape this persecution? Uh, no, Patience, uh, that may not be. These gifts, irksome as they are, were given to me for the enjoyment and delectation of my fellow creatures. I am a trustee for beauty. And it is my duty to see that the conditions of my trust are faithfully discharged. And you too are a poet? Yes, I am the apostle of simplicity. I am called Archibald the All Right. <laughs> for uh, I am infallible. Oh, and, and is it possible that you condescend to love such a girl as I? 
Yes, patience, is it not strange? I have loved you with a Florentine 14th century frenzy for full 15 years. Oh, marvelous. I have hitherto been deaf to the voice of love. I seem now to know what love is. It has been revealed to me. It is Archibald Grosvenor. Yes, Patience, it is. We shall never, never part. We shall live and die together. I swear it. We both swear it. But, oh, horror! What's the matter? Why, you are perfection, a source of endless ecstasy to all who know you. I know I am. Well? Then bless my heart. There can be nothing unselfish in loving you. Merciful powers, I never thought of that. To monopolize those features on which all women love to linger, it would be unpardonable. Too true. Oh, fatal perfection, again you interpose between me and my happiness. Oh, if you were but the thoughtless beautiful, then you are. Would that I were, but candor compels me to admit that I'm not. Our duty is clear, then. We must part, and forever. Oh, misery. And yet I cannot question the propriety of your, of your decision. Oh, farewell, patience. Farewell, Archibald. The stage. Yes, patience. Although I may not love you, for you are perfection, there's nothing to prevent your loving me. I am plain, homely, unattractive. Why, that's true. <laughs> The love of such a man as you for such a girl as I must be unselfish. Unselfishness itself. Though to many you would very selfish be. Eh, but I'm no fool, will all, will all weary. You may all the same continue loving me. Eh,
bloomed in its will decide who wins the prize. Oh,
dally too long, Reginald, for my charms are ripe, Reginald, and already they are decaying. Better secure me ere I have gone too far.
Christians love me, and how hopelessly. Oh, patience, patience, with the love of thee in my heart, what have I for these poor mad maidens but an unvalued pity? Alas, they will die of hopeless love for me, as I shall die of hopeless love for thee. If you will, my child, what shall I read? One of your own poems. One of my own poems? Oh, better not, my child. They will not cure thee of thy love. Oh. Oh. Mr. Bunthorn used to read us a poem of his own every day. And to do him justice, he read them extremely well. Oh, did he, sir? <laughs> Who am I that I should withhold my gifts from you? <laughs> what am I but a trustee? Here is a little decorator, a pure and simple thing, a very daisy. A babe might uh, appreciate it. Uh, to understand it, it is not necessary to think of anything at all. Let us think of nothing at all. Uh. <laughs> Gentle Jane was good as gold. She always did as she was told. She never spoke when her mouth was full, or caught blue bottles their legs to pull. Or spilt plum jam on her nice new frock, or put white mice in the eight day clock, or vivisected her last new doll, or fostered a passion for alcohol. And when she grew up, she was given in marriage to a first class earl who keeps his cat. <laughs> I think I am right in saying there is not one word in that decalette which is calculated to bring the blush of shame to the cheek of modesty. Oh, not one. <laughs> Purity Here's another. Teasing Tom was a very bad boy. A great big squirt was his favorite toy. He put live shrimp in his father's boots and sewed up sleeves of his Sunday suit. He punched his poor little sister's heads and can pepper their four post men. He plastered their hair with cobbler's wax and dropped hot hafenies down their backs. The consequence was he was lost. Totality, and married a girl in the Corps de Valley. Oh, oh, mark you how grandly, how relentlessly the damning catalogue of crime strode on, till retribution, like a poisoned hawk, came swooping down on the wrongdoer. Oh, it was terrible! <laughs> oh, sir, you are indeed a true poet, for you touch our hearts, and they go out to you. Ladies, I am sorry to appear on Galant, but this is Saturday, and you have been following me about ever since Monday. I should like the usual half holiday. I should take it as a personal favor if you will kindly allow me to close early today. Oh, sir, do not send us from you. Oh, poor, poor girls. It is best to speak plainly. I know that I am loved by you, but I never can love you in return for my heart is fixed elsewhere. Remember the fable of the magnet and the churn. Oh, but we don't know the fable of the magnet and the churn. Don't you? Well, then I will sing it to you. <laughs> a magnet hung in a hardware shop and all around was a loving crop of scissors and needles, nails and knives offering love for all their lives. But for I am the magnet pet no whim. Though it charm it on, it charm not him. From needles and nails and knives he turned, for it sent his love for a silver churn. A silver churn. A silver churn. His most aesthetic, very magnetic fancy took this turn. If I can wheedle a knife or a needle, why not a silver churn? His most aesthetic, very magnetic fancy took this turn. If I can wheedle a knife or a needle, why not a silver churn? And iron and steel express suit. The needles open their well drilled eyes. The pen knife sped shut up, no doubt. The scissors declared themselves cut out. 
black fellows, they boil with rage, she said. While every day went to walk its head, and hither and thither began to roam, till a hammer came up and drove them home. It drove them home. It drove them home. While this magnetic, very pathetic lover he lived to learn, by no endeavor can magnet ever attract a silver churn. While this magnetic, very pathetic lover he lived to learn, by no endeavor can magnet ever attract a silver churn. They are gone. What is this mysterious fascination I seem to exercise over all I come across? A curse on my fatal beauty, for I am sick of conquests. Oh, no. Archibald. Patience. Oh, Archibald, I have escaped with difficulty from my Reginald. I wanted to see you so that I might ask you if you still love me as fondly as ever. Love you? It's a devotion of a lifetime. Oh, oh. and hand me your ice cream. If you are a gentleman, pray remember I am another's. But you do love me, don't you? Madly, hopelessly, despairingly. That's right. I never can be yours, but that's right. And you love this bum bum? With a heart whole ecstasy that withers and scorches and burns and stings. It is my duty. But uh, you are not happy with it. Happy? I am miserable beyond description. That's right. I never can be yours, but that's right. But go now. I see dear Reginald approaching. Farewell, dear Archibald. I cannot tell you how happy it's made me to know that you still love me. Oh, if I only dared. Sir, this language to one who was promised to another. Oh, Archibald, think of me sometimes, for my heart is breaking. He is so unkind to me, and you would be so loving. Loving? I dance one half in as I'm a good and pure woman. I scream. Farewell, Archibald. Stop there. Hmm? Think of me sometimes. And that's at your peril. Ah. Once more, adieu. Get over here. Two people at once. 
know, can't you, though? No, you can't. I don't wish you could. I don't believe you know what love is. gone wrong with me since that smug-faced idiot came here. Before then, I was admired, I may say loved, too mild, adored. Oh, do let a poet soliloquize. <laughs> the damsels used to follow me wherever I went. Now they all follow him. Not all. I am still faithful to you. Yes. And a pretty damsel you are. No, not pretty. Massive. <laughs> she is. Oh. I will never leave you, I swear it. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I know what it is. It's his confounded mildness. You find me too highly spiced, if you please. Then no doubt I am. Highly spiced. Not for my taste. No, but I am for theirs. I will show the world that I can be as mild as he. If they want insipidity, they shall have it. I'll meet this fellow on his own ground and beat him on it. You shall, and I will help you. You will? Why, Jane, there's a good deal of good in you after all. I shall say. Your spirit makes the same to find your cross is too canonical. 
Bard you, ha, bard you, and that's what I should say. I was a boy, I did a lot of more video and spectacle, and I played the vision was regarded as heretical. I was a boy, I did a lot of activity in Mexico. Sing boo you, boo boo you, and that's what I should say. Sing boo you, boo boo you, and that's what I should say. Sing baby, you, you, good day, you, you, sing boo you, ha, bard you, sing boo you.
Yes, it's quite clear that our only chance of making a lasting impression on these young ladies is to become as aesthetic as they are. No doubt. The only question is how far we have succeeded in doing so. I, I don't know why, but I have an idea that this is not quite right. I don't like it. I never did. I don't see what it means. I do it, but I don't like it. My good friend, the question is not whether we like it, but whether they do. They understand these things. We don't. Now, I shouldn't be surprised if this is quite effective at a distance. I can't help but thinking we're a bit stiff at it. It would be extremely awkward if we were to be struck so. I don't think we shall be struck so. Perhaps we're a little awkward at first, but everything must have a beginning. Here they come. Ten, hut. <laughs> oh, Sophia. See? See? The immortal fire has descended on them, and they are of the inner brotherhood. Perceptively intense. Unstomachly utter. How Botticellian, how Fra Angelica. Oh, Art, we thank thee for this boon. I'm afraid we're not quite right. Well, not supremely, perhaps, but oh, so all but. Oh, Sophia, are they not quite too all but? <laughs> they are indeed a jolly utter. I wonder what the inner brotherhood usually recommend for crap. <laughs> Ladies, we will not deceive you. We are doing this at some personal inconvenience with a view to expressing the extremity of our devotion to you. We trust that it is not without its effect. Well, we will not deny that we are much moved by this proof of your attachment. Yes, your conversion to the principles of aesthetic art in its highest development has touched us deeply. And if Mr. Grosvenor should remain obdurate, uh. which we have every reason to believe he will. Oh, I wish they would make haste. We are not prepared to say that our yearning hearts will not go out to you. By sections of three, rapture. Matrimonial fish. And it's only fair that each of these young ladies should have a chance of hooking you. <laughs>
their heartfelt sympathy. He will hope to be contented with a hope of sympathy. In the case of resident and sympathy, he will live and die. He will have to be contented with a hope of sympathy. upon those features which all others may gaze upon at their goodwill. Ah, I'm a very narcissus. <laughs> oh, it's no use. I can't live without admiration. Since Grovna came here, insipidity has been at a premium. Oh, oh, he's there. Oh, bundle. Come here, look. Very graceful, isn't it? Allow me, I haven't seen it. Why, oh, yes. Yes, it is graceful. Oh, good gracious, not that. Hmm? This. Oh, good heavens, you don't mean that. Bah, I'm in no mood for trifling, no. sir. And what is amiss? With your uh, personal disadvantages, you can have no idea of the inconvenience of being madly loved at first sight by every woman you meet. Sir, until you came here, I was adored. Exactly until I came here. That's my grievance. I cut everybody out. I assure you, if you could only suggest some means whereby, uh, consistently with my duty to society, I could escape these inconvenient attentions, oh, you would earn my everlasting gratitude. Oh, well, I will do so at once. However popular it may be with the world at large, your personal appearance is highly objectionable to me. It is. Oh, thank you, thank you. How can I express my gratitude? By making a complete change at once. Your conversation must henceforth be perfectly matter of fact. Just cut your hair and have a back parting. Big button. A back parting, sir. In appearance and costume, you must be absolutely commonplace. Oh, pardon me, that's impossible. <laughs> Take care. When I am thwarted, I am very terrible. <laughs> but I can't help that. I am a man with a mission, and that mission must be fulfilled. I don't think you quite appreciate the consequences of thwarting me. I don't care what they are. I won't go so far as to say I would actually do it. But suppose, suppose, for one moment, that I were to curse you! Ha 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 ha! Very well, take care. Uh, well, but surely you would never do that. Uh, I don't know. It would be an extreme measure, no doubt. But still! But you would not do it, I'm sure you would not. Reflect, reflect. You, you, you had a mother once. Never! But well, then you had an aunt. <gasps> ah, I see you have. By the memory of that dear aunt, I implore you to pause ere you resort to this last fearful expedient. Oh, Mr. Bunthorn, reflect, reflect. <laughs> I must not allow myself to be unmanned. <clears throat> Consent at once, or Mary and nephew's curse! Hold! Are you absolutely resolved? Absolutely. 
Will nothing shake you? Nothing. I am adamant. Well, very good, then I yield. <gasps> what? You swear it? I do, cheerfully. I have long wished for a reasonable pretext for such a change as you suggest. It has come at last. I do it on compulsion. Victory! I triumph! <laughs> when I go out of door, a damsel's a score. All sighing and burning and clinging and yearning will follow me as before. I shall with cultured taste distinguish gems from paste. And high diddle diddle will rank as a niddle if I pronounce it chaste. A most intense young man, a soulful eyed young man, an unutterable, wetful, super ascetical, out of the way young man. But tea me if you can, an everyday young man, a common bee type with a stick in a pipe and a half bit black and tan. Who thinks of urban pops, for fun and Monday pops, who's fond of his dinner and doesn't get thinner on buffalo beer and chops. A common face young man, a very packed young man, a steady and stolid, jolly bank holiday, everyday young man, a Japanese young man. A blue and white young man, Francesca de Rimini, Mimini, Timini, je ne sais quoi, young man. A Chancery Lane, young man, a Somerset House, young man, a very delectable, highly respectable, threepenny fuss, young man. A pallid and thin, young man, a haggard and lank, young man, a greenery, yallery, grove in a gallery, port in the grave, young man. A Sewell and Cross, young man, a Howard and James, young man, a voting your particle, what? what's the next article, Waterloo House, young man. See me if you can, a man of the a man, an alphabetical air, a medical, man. a I have committed my last act of ill nature, and henceforth I am a changed character. What in the world is the matter with you? Patience, I am a changed man. Hitherto I have been gloomy, moody, fitful, uncertain in temper, and selfish in disposition. You have, indeed. All that is changed. I've reformed. I've bottled myself upon Mr. Goldner. Henceforth, I am mildly cheerful. I shall still be aesthetic, but my asceticism will be of the most pastoral kind. Oh, Reginald, is all this true? No, quite true. Observe how amiable I am. <laughs> oh, Reginald, but, but how long will this last? With occasional intervals for rest and refreshment. As long as I do. Oh, Reginald! Oh, I'm so happy! Oh, dear, dear Reginald, I can't express the joy I feel at this change. Why, it will no longer be a duty to love you, but a pleasure, a rapture, an ecstasy. My darling! But, oh, horror. What's the matter? Is it absolutely certain that you've absolutely reformed, that you are henceforth utterly free from defect of any kind? Oh, it is quite certain. It is absolutely certain. I've sworn it. Well, then, I never can be yours. Why not? I love to be pure, must be absolutely unselfish. There can be nothing unselfish in loving so perfect a being as you have now become. Oh, well, stop a moment. I don't want to change. I'll, I'll relapse. I'll be as I was. And he interrupted. <laughs> What a new house, young man, a sewer in cross, young man, a steady and quality, jolly big holiday, every day, young man. As free as the world's your girls, Madam Louise, your girls, we're prettily, prettily, cheerily, chattering, every day, young girls. Angela, Ella, Sophia, what, what does this mean? It means that Archibald's all right cannot be all wrong, and if the all right chooses to discard aestheticism, it proves that aestheticism ought to be discarded. Oh, Archibald! Archibald! I'm shocked! Surprised! Horrified! Well, I can't help it! I'm not a free agent! I'll do it on compulsion! This is... This is terrible! Go! I shall never set eyes on you again! Oh, say really. But... Oh, Joy! What's the matter? Oh, is it quite, quite certain that you will always be a commonplace young man? Always! I have sworn it! Why? Then there's nothing to prevent my loving you with all the fervor at my command. Why, that's true. My Archibald. My, my patience. 
crushed again. Cheer up. I am still here. I have never left you, and I never will. Oh, thank you, Jane. After all, there's no denying it. You, you are a fine figure of a woman. <laughs> My Reginald. My Jane. has at length determined to select a bride. I have a great gift to bestow. Oh, thank you. I have a great gift to bestow. Approach such of you as are truly lovely. <laughs> In personal appearance, you have all that is necessary to make a woman happy. In common fairness, I think I ought to choose the only one among you who has the misfortune to be distinctly plain. Jane! Duke! Crushed again! After much debate, eternal eye on Lady Jane decides that the now can take the curl and she be the virgin bride. In the face of precedence, it's in the time. Break a day's reward and not a token, very big aside. Each of us will wear the honor. 